Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This presentation is regarding the antimicrobial stewardship program ASP. At the end of this presentation, you will be able to define the antimicrobial stewardship program, identify the MOH infection control audit, ICA elements and sub-elements, understand the benefits of this program, identify the needed resources uh, for successful ASP, apply the ASP in the clinical practices. The proper use of antibiotics is an important strategy to preserving the efficacy of antibiotics in the treatment of infectious diseases. Sadly, there are bad news regarding the antibiotics, which are increasing the resistance to the available antibiotics and the stagnant new antibiotic development. Our dilemma is in this cycle. The use and overuse of any new antibiotics will lead to resistance, and the resistance will push the scientists to produce another new antibiotic that will enter to the same cycle. So we are struggling in this cycle, and to break this cycle, we have to stop the overuse of the antibiotics and start the antimicrobial stewardship program. What is antimicrobial stewardship program? It's a multi-system team program that involves limiting inappropriate use of antibiotics and reducing the antimicrobial resistance. The antimicrobial stewardship program mission is to reach to the right antibiotic indication, selection, time, dose, duration, and route. There are two main goals for the ASP. First, improve the clinical outcomes by optimizing the antibiotic selection, dose and route of administration, and the duration of therapy. The second goal is to minimize unintended consequences of antibiotic use, including toxicity, emergence of resistance, and the excessive cost. As a global action plan to limit the antimicrobial resistance, we need two effective programs. We need an effective antimicrobial stewardship program and an effective infection control program. Our international reference is the CDC. CDC recommends the core elements of the antibiotic stewardship programs in 2014, but it's updated in 2019. So of course the updated one is our international reference. So it's a worldwide attention and the CDC recommend to apply the ASP strategies in all hospitals, regardless of the size. The MOH will produce a great tool for infection control audit 2023. Infection control audit ICA is an on-site verification activity and a quality improvement process that aims to improve patient care and outcomes. This tool is constructed using comprehensive domains that consists of elements and sub-elements based on national and international evidence. There are five main domains in this tool, A, B, C, D, and E. Domain A, infection control administrative measures. Domain B, infection control key measures. Domain C, hospital acquired infection surveillance and outbreak management. Domain D, departmental infection control measures. And domain E, supportive services departments and related measures. Regarding the antimicrobial stewardship program is under domain C. Under domain C, there are five elements, but I'm gonna focus on element C3, which is antimicrobial stewardship 
program and antibiogram. And there are eight sub-elements under this element. The first one, C3.1, there is a written policy and procedure for ASP formulated and approved by the ASP committee members uh, that I will talk about them later. The second sub-element, C3.2, there is a written restricted antibiotics policy and also I'm going to talk about this later. The third sub-element is C3.3. There is an interventional policy implemented in the hospital to improve the antibiotic use, which is developed and approved by the pharmacist. The fourth sub-element is C3.4. The ASP committee members include the ID physician, pharmacist, microbiologist, eviction control, and other team members that I will talk about them later, as I said. Fifth sub-element is C3.5. The antibiogram is regularly discussed by the ASP committee to improve the antibiotic use. And the sixth sub-element, C3.6, the hospital leaders dedicate the necessary resources, human, financial, and information technology resources to the ASP committee. The seventh sub-element, C3.7, the antibiogram report is prepared and interpreted annually by the microbiologist and reported to the infection control and the ASP team leader. The last sub-element is C3.8 is regarding the education about the antibiotic resistance and the optimal antibiotic prescription, and this uh, should be regularly at least biannual. For effective ASP, we need to remember this equation. We need first a dedicated multidisciplinary team, and we need active strategies to achieve an effective ASP. The antimicrobial stewardship team members, as mentioned in the sub-element C3.4 in the ICA, include the following. Infectious diseases physician, clinical microbiologist, infection control, nursing heads, Clinical departments heads, including the surgical department, the critical care unit, and the OR heads. The IT officer, clinical pharmacist with ID training, and the last but not the least, the administration. Regarding the clinical microbiologist, I will talk about it in a separate slide. For the infection control, they can assist with education, also, in analyzing and reporting the antibiotic resistance data. For the nurses, it's very important to engage them in this program because uh, they are important, for example, in assuring that cultures are performed correctly before starting antibiotics. For the clinical department's heads, it's very vital that all clinicians, including their role model, the ID physician, to be fully engaged in this program to improve the antibiotic use because simply they are the prescribers of the antibiotics in the hospitals. The IT staff also critical in integrating the ASP protocols into the workflow at the point of care for example, the antibiotic order sets and the access to the facility specific guidelines. The pharmacist helped to develop, approve and implement the antibiotic policies that will improve the antibiotic use in the hospital. And this is according to the sub element C3.2 and C3.3 in the ICA. Highly effective ASP have a strong engagement of the pharmacist with ID training, either as a leader or co-leader. For the administration, they can, they can help ensure that other departments are aware and collaborate with the ASP activities. They can outline the stewardship-related duties in their job descriptions and annual performance 
also they can ensure that staff have sufficient time to contribute in this program. Leadership commitment and support is very critical in helping to provide the needed resources, including staffing, financial and information technology resources to accomplish the ASP goals effectively, as mentioned in the sub-element C3.6 in the ICA, because the lack of necessary resources can be a barrier to successful ASP. These resources can help the ASP committee to uh, support the training uh, programs and participating in the World Awareness Antimicrobial Week celebration uh, that is from 18 to 24 November every year. Moreover, having regular meetings to report ASP activities and outcomes on a regular basis, as mentioned in the sub-element C3.1 in the ICA, uh, that should be at least biannually or every six months. The ASP team, as mentioned in the sub-element C3.1 in the ICA, can be directed by the ID physician and co-directed by the clinical pharmacist with ID training, or can be the opposite, directed by the pharmacist and co-directed by the ID physician. The role of microbiologist in the ASP guide the proper use of the lab test and the flow of the results, also guide the empiric therapy by creating and interpreting the antibiogram. This is a copy for an antibiogram in a facility, which is an overall profile or report of antimicrobial susceptibility testing results of a specific microorganism, which will guide the prescribers on making smarter choices of empiric therapy. And as mentioned in the sub-element C3.7 in ICA, the antibiogram report is prepared and interpreted annually by the microbiologist and reported to infection control and to ASP team leader. Also, as in sub-element C3.5 ICA, the antibiogram is regularly discussed by the ASP committee with action plans and interventions to improve the use of antibiotics and to prevent the resistance in the hospital. Moreover, the microbiologist can assess the local susceptibility rates and monitor the antimicrobial resistance trends over time within the hospital. The antimicrobial resistance trends is a number of patients with a specific antibiotic resistance divided by the total number of admitted patients. Again, this is the equation for an effective ASP. I talked about the dedicated multidisciplinary team, and now I'm going to talk about the active strategies that we needed to apply for an effective ASP. Here, there are 11 important strategies for antimicrobial stewardship program. National policy, local hospital policy, education, formulary restriction and pre-authorization, antimicrobial order forms, antimicrobial cycling, streamlining or de-escalation, combination therapy, dose optimization, parenteral to oral conversion, and finally, surveillance and feedback. First, I'm gonna talk about the national policy. MOH introduced the first edition of the antimicrobial guideline in 2014, and it's updated in 2019. So this is our standard reference. The second strategy is the local hospital policy. According to sub-elements C3.2 and C3.3 in the ICA, a local antibiotic policy, including the restricted antibiotics policy, must be available in the facility. And the antibiotic policy must be formulated based on the national guideline, evidence, and the local antibiogram. 
and it should be focused on the narrowest spectrum, least expensive, minimal toxicity, and the least impact on the development of resistance. The antibiotic policy should be developed and approved by the pharmacist and followed up by the infection control department. The uh, antibiotic policy is very essential to standardize the clinical practices and it can be as a tool guiding the prescribers who lack competency for antimicrobial prescription. The third strategy is the education. Education is a key component to improve hospital antibiotic use. It's very essential to provide a foundation of knowledge to the healthcare workers. And there are many options for providing education, such as presentations, either formal or informal, messaging through posters, flyers, or even electronic communication, and can be very powerful when it's a case-based education. It must be ongoing for sustainment. The target customers for the education, prescribers, pharmacists, and the nurses. And according to the sub-element C3.8 in the ICA, education should be about the antimicrobial resistance and the optimal antimicrobial prescription and should be provided regularly to the healthcare workers, at least biannual every six months. The fourth strategy is the formulary restriction and the pre-authorization. Formulary means a list of drugs. In formulary restriction, we need to evaluate the drugs for inclusion in the hospital formulary based on therapeutic efficacy, toxicity, and cost. So we call them restricted antimicrobials. They are a certain group of restricted antimicrobial agents. Usually, they are broad spectrum with high potential of resistance emergence and high cost, for example, amikacin or daptomycin. And as per the uh, sub-element C 3.2 in the ICA, the restricted antibiotic policy must be available and it should be developed and followed up by the pharmacy and infection control department. Pre-authorization, it's a method that requires prayer approval for the antibiotic prescription by the ID consultant. It's very important to consider emergency cases, for example, allow the telephone approval or allow the uh, dispense of the first few doses of the antibiotic without authorization, depending on the hospital's policy, but consider the emergency cases. The fifth strategy is the antimicrobial order forms. This is a copy of one antimicrobial order form from the latest MOH antimicrobial guideline. They are different from one infection to another. This copy is for sepsis. The antimicrobial order form should be electronic unless electronic prescription system does not exist in the hospital. One more important thing uh, which is very effective the use of time-sensitive automatic stop order for specific antibiotic, especially the surgical prophylaxis antibiotics. The next strategy is the antimicrobial cycling. Antimicrobial cycling means using a specific antibiotic as a first line for a defined period of time, then replacing that antibiotic with a drug of different class but a similar spectrum of activity for the same duration, then repeating the cycle. So it's removal and substitution of a specific antibiotic to prevent the development of antibiotic resistance. The next strategy is streamlining or de-escalation. Once the culture results are available, streamline or de-escalate the antibiotics into a more targeted antibiotic. 
if the patient on one broad spectrum antibiotic de-escalate into narrow spectrum antibiotic. If there are two antibiotics, de-escalate into one antibiotic. If the culture result is negative, discontinue the antibiotics. The next strategy is the combination therapy. Combination therapy is recommended. This is a combination of broad spectrum agents for empiric therapy in certain cases, for example, critically ill patients with serious infections and at risk of MDRO. This is to improve the clinical outcomes of the patient and target the most likely pathogen, but de-escalation is encouraged within 48 to 72 hours once the culture result is available. The next strategy is the antibiotic dose optimization. Optimization or adjustment of the antibiotic dosing based on the patient's characteristics, causative organisms, sites of infections, and pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics characteristics of the antibiotics. Some antibiotics like vancomycin and aminoglycoside need monitoring in case of organ dysfunction, for example, renal failure. And the therapeutic drug monitoring forms are available in the uh, MOH latest antimicrobial guideline. The next strategy is parenteral to oral conversion. Once the culture and sensitivity reports are available and the patient's condition allow, convert the antibiotic from parenteral route to oral route. Why the parenteral to oral conversion is preferred? What are the advantages of oral antibiotic over the IV antibiotic? First, decreasing the need for the IV access as a result, reducing the risk of cannula-related infections or thrombophlebitis. So this will improve the patient's safety. Another advantage that the oral antibiotic is less expensive than the IV antibiotic. So this will reduce the cost. One more thing that the uh, oral antibiotic will decrease the length of hospital stay, so earlier discharge, because the patient can continue the oral antibiotic at home. Nurses here are very important because they are the most aware of when patients are able to tolerate oral medications and they can initiate discussions with the doctors on switching to oral antibiotics. The last strategy is the surveillance and feedback. As antibiotic policy depends heavily on surveillance of antibiotic resistance and antibiotic consumption in the facility, it's mandatory to establish an efficient surveillance system. This is a regular monitoring for an antimicrobial prescription. This is strategy after prescribing of antibiotic, not like the previous strategies. So it's a post-prescription review. Here, the clinical microbiologist is very essential to provide a patient-specific culture and susceptibility data, as well as the antibiogram. To report the antibiotic consumption, we need some metric measures like the defined daily dose, DDD, and days of therapy, DOT. The defined daily dose is the assumed average maintenance dose per day for an antibiotic as specified by WHO, while the days of the therapy is simply the total number of days of all used antibiotics regardless of the dose. And when you calculate these measures, you need to calculate them per 1000 patient days to standardize your calculation to allow comparison between hospitals or even services of different sizes.
Finally, the feedback and the discussion of the results in the relevant ASP meetings. Therefore, the ASP members can interact with the prescribers to modify specific antibiotic therapy. This is again to remind you that we need a dedicated multidisciplinary team and active strategies for an effective antimicrobial stewardship program. How can we help as infection preventionists to improve the antimicrobial stewardship program? First, identify, analyze, and report hospital-acquired infection data, including the multidrug-resistant organism trends, Second, implement and oversee the appropriate infection control practices in the facility. Third, educate staff about the MDRO and the ASP. Finally, encourage and support the ASP interventions. In conclusion, antimicrobial resistance is a global problem and antimicrobial stewardship programs are the global solutions. Choose interventions based on the needs of your facility as well as the availability of resources. Antimicrobial stewardship program should be careful not to implement too many interventions at once. These are the references of this presentation. Thank you for your attention and listening.